half-life is professor jerry thomas is one of britain's leading experts on the effects of radiation on the human body she's professor jerry thomas is actually uh the person who runs the chernobyl tissue bank and uh, she went to the fukushima prefecture in september 2011 uh, to get the contract for uh dealing with the thyroid uh issues that they obviously thought they were going to get um, from the uh, Japanese government and uh, so there's a slight bit of bias there. In terms of her being one of the leading uh, experts in the UK uh, that would probably be Richford, Richard Wakeford. Uh, I wrote to Jerry Thomas uh, some time ago and um, it was uh, about the uh, uh, Fukushima Symposium in 2011, where lots of people were going to, um, you know, lots of uh, scientists and uh, university types were going there to uh, get funding uh, for, um, you know, to uh, help the uh, Japanese government. And uh, basically she responded to me uh, <coughs> when I was asking her technical questions. Uh, the technical questions that came from uh, the technical answers, I should say, came from uh, Richard Wakeford, <coughs> who is ex-BNFL uh, from Sellafield. Uh, he's um, basically was uh, she had to go to him for that advice. Um, so uh, obviously got doubts about uh, his his uh, bias <coughs> in this uh, area. But uh, let's go a little bit further. Come with me to the town of Okuma inside the radiation exclusion zone okay now uh, they're inside the uh, 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 the uh, exclusion zone and as you can see and you will see uh, and i would say keep a good eye out for the um uh, the sort of uh, the side of the road and you'll see that there's certain areas that are cleaned up and you'll notice that the road they're walking on there's no debris all the debris has been uh, sort of kind of put to one side uh, there's not much of it either so there's been a lot of cleanup being done there i think uh, but uh, you can make your own mind up. She believes strongly the world has been told the wrong story about this place. Yeah. Yeah, so. uh, Jerry, this is your, the first time you've been in here. Yeah. What's your initial re reaction when you see this? I think it's really sad because it doesn't look like Japan. I mean, Japan is a very neat country and you come here and you can see that this has just been left a rack and ruin. Um, nobody's been here. You can see there's still damage from the earthquake that's not been repaired. And for the people who left it, it must be incredibly sad not to be able to come back. And, and you're very much of the opinion that this, this is not necessary? At the moment, it wouldn't be safe to come back because you haven't repaired the damage to the infrastructure. But in terms of radiation, the amount of radiation that we're getting now is very small. I mean, if you were inside a building, you'd be getting less. Yeah, I was going to say, so so you can take, in the air. we can take a reading here. So I'm my, this is my personal dosimeter, yeah. and it's saying about 2.8 microsieverts per hour, so that's yeah. 3 microsieverts per hour. Yeah. So what does that mean in terms of, you know, how, if I lived here, how much radiation I'd be getting each year? If you equate that, if you stood out in the open air all day, and, and, you, out and you sat out here, and didn't move from these spots, then you'd be getting around about an extra millisievert a year, which is not very much when you consider our background doses are about 2 millisieverts a year. And if you had a CT scan, it would be 10 millisieverts. And if you... Okay, well, at 10 millisieverts a year, uh, which is a CT scan, uh, now that has uh, a risk of cancer. And uh, that's using the, uh, the ICRP model. Uh, the risk is uh, basically one that where they would uh, certainly uh, be wary about giving CT scans. They wouldn't give you like uh, a few a year uh, because that would likely cause you cancer. If you're a pregnant woman, a young child or a baby, I think you'd probably find uh, that that um, giving them CT scans would, uh, would would increase the risk because of their smaller body mass and what have you. And I'd just like to draw your attention to the left of the screen there where you've got a lovely clean sort of, uh, and it looks like it's mud so it looks like it's been cleaned. There's obviously a hot spot there that they've cleaned up. Um, and, you know, the road's been cleaned. And you can see, obviously, if you've been looking at the, uh, the uh, sort of sides of it, you can see where things have been pushed to the side of the, uh, the, the road uh, here and there, just uh, some debris, you know, after five years. 
Um, and interestingly enough, we're not hearing any birds and uh, all this kind of thing. Timothy Mousseau has been there and uh, in those sort of um, in, in lesser contaminated areas. And there's a, a vast effect in, of uh, animal wildlife. And uh, he has 80 peer reviewed studies that say that. And of course, Jeremy Thomas is not uh, drawing us to that, nor is she drawing us to the fact that, you know, young children, pregnant women, uh, would certainly not want to be having x-rays and uh, CT scans, you know. Um, and so, uh, anyway, I'll, uh, we'll carry on for a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. For, for radiation working, you can get in a nuclear power plant, you get up to 20 minutes. Yeah, that's 20 minutes, yeah. And so an extra one minute a year, what is the long-term impact on your health? Absolutely nothing. Okay, so she says there's no uh, impact, and uh, we were talking about children, babies, and uh, and pregnant women, um, and uh, so the bottom line is she was also saying that three millisievert a year, uh, sorry, three microsievert a year, which they're walking down the middle of the road and the cleaned up area and she's saying well if i was in that building over there everything would be fine you know but so they would have to clean that area up because it would be a uh, hotter and they're not letting their geiger counter too near that obviously um and uh, otherwise they could have walked into one of those buildings and, and proven that the three microsievert would have dropped so um and she also says that three microsieverts is you know kind of a, you can find that in uh, in places uh, but anyway we'll, we'll carry on i'm going to come back to that point has the media and the government and everybody got it completely wrong in what they've been saying about it? In my opinion, yes, they definitely have. I mean, it's, it's, the radiation has not been the disaster. It's our response to the radiation, our fears that we've projected onto other people to say this is really dangerous. It isn't really dangerous, and there's plenty of places in the world where you'd live with natural background radiation of at least this level. But Okay, now, the... Three milli, three microsievert a year, uh, sorry, three microsievert an hour, basically. Now, you know, where does she get that figure from? Now, she's saying that, uh, I don't know, somewhere like Finland, maybe? Well, we, we know on your depth that there's nowhere where you get three microsievert an hour. And uh, But where she probably is trying to talk about, somewhere like uh, Iran. And the study that was done in, uh, in Thailand uh, by a Thai, uh, a Thai uh, expert, and it was published in Thailand, um, I actually found it on a new, before the Iranians uh, closed their internet off. Um, I found a study that basically was looking at uh, the mountains in Iran, where they basically um, sort of uh, did a study going up the mountain, and uh, they were doing an epidemiological study, and they found that as they moved further up the mountain, that the uh, there was an, an increased risk of cancer. Now we're not talking, you know, millions of people here. We're talking an increased risk of cancer. So more people were getting cancer the further you went up the actual mountain. Now, why is that? You might say. Well, is that because there's more raid on there, and that is what what would normally be uh, the uh, would give you that sort of high amount to be ra uh, uranium, thorium, and uh, raid radon. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, what it is, as you go up these big mountains in Iran, uh, you get more UV light. So if you had a Geiger counter, and if you go on a plane even, you will get very high doses. Now, that's uh, that's talking about uh, light from the sun. Where they are right now, there are particulates, and there are bits being blown around. And even if they were to clear that street off, uh, which they probably have tried to do, and obviously, and... Uh, you know, and they cleared those buildings, um, you know, off contamination if that was possible. Uh, then basically, this what would be behind that would be contaminated, and that would work its way back into the buildings and would work its way back into the uh, roads. So, you know, once again, Jerry Thomas, leading expert on uh, radiation and health, is ignoring peer reviewed studies and ignoring uh, her own uh, sort of uh, national uh, colleague who is uh, Ian Fairley who is a proper uh, sort of uh, epidemiologist and he's done a study a peer-reviewed study that was challenged for two whole years uh, it's a bulletproof study that proved that children near nuclear power plants were getting um, leukemia and that is well under the three microsieva uh, micro per hour where they are at the moment um, so they've got particulates and they're above the area, uh, above the sort of uh, levels of uh, uh, 
dose, if you like, that you find around nuclear power plants. And we see that children under five were getting higher rates of leukemia. Study done, pan-European study, he got, um, Ian, Ian Fairley got all the data from all the places, and that's what happened. So I'm going to go a little bit further just to see what else she has to say. Because it is not the norm, and because we know there's been an accident that's caused these levels to be raised, we, we perceive that as being very much more dangerous than it actually is. So we've got ourselves into... Right, so she's saying we perceive it, we've got fear, we've got all these sort of keywords, but what she's not saying is anything about any peer-reviewed study that basically uh, proves that her points basically she's ignoring the fact of contamination like all those little bits of dust there where they're staying well away from by the way have you noticed uh, they're walking down the middle of the road they're not going around and moving the geiger in and checking it out like we would do uh, they're walking down the middle of a cleaned road uh, and the road may have even been clean because this is not an area that they need to go in so it may have been cleared just so that they could walk down that road um, and get the minimum amount of uh, dose um, I reckon if you got near to the edge, well, it could go up to 20 microsieverts, but, uh, well, we can't tell because they're not going to sort of do a, a, a sort of a sensible study like that. Sort of not of believing that a single bit more of radiation is going to be very, very dangerous. Whereas actually, I think there's very good evidence that worrying about it, not going outside and exercising, which means you put on weight, that's much more dangerous for your health than a small amount of radiation. Okay, so she's talking about weight, and um, well, I'm not going to say anything, I'll just leave it to you. Uh, certainly, um, Mr. Rupert Wingfield, or whatever his name is, uh, who's quite happy to play along with this, uh, walking down the middle of the road and staying away from the contaminated edges, um, that uh, basically this is a PR moment, uh, and uh, we're sort of uh, going to be looking at uh, why Mr. Wingfield uh, is, uh, you know, and the BBC uh, rely on the science media centre that are uh, paid for by EDF and people like this for their science and especially for their science to do with uh, nuclear issues and uh, their science to do with climate change and many others because obviously Shell Oil and people like that are all paying £5,000 each and there are many corporations that are paying £5,000 each to the Science Media Centre and the Science Media Centre are, uh, well, um, I've... Uh, done some investigation in that but let's just say that uh, the science media center was supplying information to the japanese science media center um, and uh, they even sent a, a specialist you know one of their members who was actually a psychologist uh, to australia um, to uh, uh, help develop the science media center in japan and um, it is all and the science media center is not about investigative uh, scientific research it's about uh, managing uh, sort of the uh, media for the corporations to minimize impact in corporate profit and i think i'll stop there <laughs>